so everyone welcome after a, a brief break during the summer we are back again with our i think the fifth edition or the sixth edition of uh, bim talks and today we really are honored and happy to have as guest uh, john murphy junior of coastal construction his official title still says virtual design construction manager but i know he's a director and plays a much bigger role within the company and i'm very excited to have john here today because uh, Coastal Construction have been one of the early adopters of BIM, right, John? I think you've been yeah, there yeah. for in this position as virtual design construction uh, director for almost 19 years now. Yeah, yep. Yeah. I mean, yep, yeah. yeah, pretty much, almost pretty 20, much. But, right, you know. 20 years. And uh, I know, having visited your office and seen you, that you know you have been exploring print, 3D printing, and you've got some nice little nifty models of the projects you're doing. I also know you are interested in drones and other technologies. So um, I, I'm very, very uh, keen about this conversation today because I think a lot of companies and of uh, other general contractors, design build contractors and others can definitely be inspired by your journey in leveraging technology for construction and uh, talking more about, uh, you know, let's, as we go, we'll talk more about how that journey has been. So uh, okay. thank you, John, for joining this call. Welcome. Uh, welcome to everybody else who's watching this uh, BIM Talks presentation. I want to begin by sharing the screen of your uh, company's page because I think there's some very interesting projects you have done. So let me just start there, John. Um, okay. These are some of the, this this building on the right was actually very, very interesting looking stuff. So do you want to talk and begin by telling people a little bit more about some of the work uh, that Coastal Construction is doing in Florida? as one of the key developers in the Miami Beach and overall Florida area? Uh, sure, yeah. So um, like you mentioned, we were primarily focused in Miami, but we work in you know, the majority of South Florida from the Keys up um, is our primary focus. We, we do a lot of um, high-end luxury building, um, a lot of high-end you know, residential condos, commercial, um, pretty much all vert vertical construction. Um, we also have a custom homes department where we do a lot of um, very high end um, work on you know South Beach and and down here Star Island every, everywhere else. But um, yeah, that project we actually just broke ground on. When you're looking at there, so okay, cool. Very so unique projects. Everyone's different. Everyone has its own set of challenges and. Um, that's where, you know, the technology comes into play to really help us add efficiency on these jobs. Hey, that's great. So uh, as a longtime user of BIM, and I, I know, as I mentioned, you've been doing this for a very long time. Can you talk about the journey of uh, coastal construction, your journey in coastal, leveraging technology, especially things like BIM, 3D printing and drones, and how that has worked and what has not worked? Uh, sure. So, you know, technically, so I started with Coastal around 20 years ago, but it wasn't always on the technology side. I started, I was out in the field. Um, I was in estimating for a little bit, uh, you know, in uh, APM here and there. And then it wasn't until around 2007 where, where BIM was becoming more of a thing down here and we're hearing about it. And, um, you know, I'd always been involved in technology. I went to school actually for computer animation. So, um, it, it became a, a very keen interest of mine. So I went out, learned Revit, you know, did a bunch of research, uh, modeled the project I was working on. We were currently building the St. Regis project in Bell Harbor. And okay. we saw like very quickly that um, there was some value there. Like it was worth looking into. Um, I worked closely with my boss, who's Tom C. Murphy, uh, co-owner of Coastal. And, you know, he, he saw, he was like, hey, so this is worth looking into. Let's, you know, get into it and, you know, see where we can, you know, add value. And when we were doing a lot in pre-con, I did some exercises for the owner of that project. And, um, you know, it was great. I was able to develop the department within Coastal, um, hire an intern, and then slowly build it from there. And it's, you know, it's been pretty much over 15 years that we've been very involved in you know, BIM, BDC um, type technologies, uh, starting mainly, you know, working in Revit and Navisworks, but then also, like you said, integrating, working with drones, with laser scanners, um, 
you know, 3D, 3D printing. printing. We're doing a ton of now, um, which has been really cool um, and, and very actually useful. Um, and then, um, you know, there's a bunch of really neat stuff being developed now with the whole AI integration and, and, and you know, all sorts of the AR and virtual, you know, all sorts of stuff. So, all right. It's, uh, you In know, fact, been exciting, but we've, we've had a, a, a pretty, um, you know, focused effort. We like to be what we say, you know, on, on the cutting edge, but not the bleeding edge. And, <laughs> you know, as you know, the construction industry is not the first to, um, you know, want to spend a whole lot on technology. I think it's around 1.5%, you know, is pretty standard, which is one of the lowest out of, you know, any market. But um, we definitely like to see what's out there, test and look at a lot of, you know, products. But, you know, when we go in and, and meet with the client on a job that we're either bidding on or starting, we're very clear that we're not going to integrate a technology unless we find an actual practical value to that job. So that's one of our biggest things is, you know, just doing stuff just to do it, you know, a lot of times ends up just being a really costly waste of time and you end up you know disrupting workflows that otherwise didn't need to be disrupted but um you know it's taking the time and, and really finding where that value is and, and where you can you know add efficiency to a process or save money or, or add safety or you know all sorts of things so john uh, could i ask you this uh, in the last 15 years that you've been using revit and you've gone from the early stages of adoption to where things are today. Would you say it's been something that has added value and technology is something that companies, if they adopt, can benefit from it, which can save money and cost overall after all your learning? Uh, yeah, for sure. I mean, we still, and it seems like even more so now because it's for whatever reason, it's, it seems like the the drawings we're getting are just you know have less and less effort early on as far as coordination and and practical you know actual you know buildable work put into them so we're we're getting very involved we're trying to get involved early and earlier and working with the design teams and doing early design coordination um especially on these large you know complex projects on very tight sites downtown Miami um, they're very, you know, complex MEP systems and very tight, you know, we have less and less ceiling space to, space to work with and, you know, I'm sure. faster and, and, you know, right. more cost effective and maximize, you know, you know, the value and lot and everything else. So, um, it's becoming, you know, more and more valuable as we go on. Um, and a lot of the design teams that we've been working with over the years, that weren't early adopters are, are coming around more and more. So we're getting models earlier on, you know, in that process, they're more willing to work with us with, you know, with the 3D technologies and not just, you know, CAD and those sorts of things. And um, it's added a lot of efficiency to our process. And, um, you know, it, it's been tough, I'd say, you know, I've been doing, you know, working heavily in, you know, BIM VDC technology now for over 15 years and it's still, a challenge to get some of the older guys to buy into yes it know, is working with a computer or an iPad and you know you know, get a lot of you know the old school guys that you know will still fight you but they work with them show them the value don't argue with them and, and you know they eventually come around and you know we'll see the I value think... and, and know that you know we're we're using this to help you out and it's um it's gonna add value to your project I guarantee you that Wonderful. I think that's really good advice. Um, uh, in fact, it's been our experience too that there are a lot of people who are set in their ways. You can't change them. But if you can convince them that this is something that is valuable and it's going to save them time and money, they will come around to it. In fact, exactly. uh, I think uh, your point is very, very valid. Uh, today, with all the kind of technology that is helping us you know, do laser scanning, uh, do a better job of as builds, so the better job of digital reality capture, helping us do much more in terms of uh, early planning, better execution, problem solving at the early stages, and the backward integration, the logistics and supply chain integration, and some of the things that we are able to do now using machine learning and AI, 
uh, is going to make life easy. It's just technology, which is going to take time. And I loved your quote earlier. You want to be on the cutting edge, but not on the bleeding edge. And that's <laughs> a wonderful advice for people. Yeah. Uh, one thing that I think a lot of our, uh, when I have conversations with people, they are worried about is the fact that uh, adopting new technology means a heavy investment in software licenses in training in getting the right sort of people. And with this whole great resignation, we already having problems of finding people. And then you want to have trained BIM engineers and coordinators coming on board and the, building a team takes time and it takes investment and it takes patience. What advice do you have for people about how much kind, what are the timelines? What are the hurdles, common hurdles they could face in trying to build uh, a team that can start leveraging BIM for their own companies? Uh, yeah, and that's tough because it's, I mean, it's a real challenge. It's, it's, it's not cheap to set up a computer that can handle, you know, utilizing these really resource heavy programs on large projects. And then you have the licensing costs and all the software and the training and everything else. Um, so it could be a bit daunting. And I think that's been a, a major reason why a lot of companies have, have taken so long to adapt to, you know, using these technologies. Um, and if you have a, a big team of drafters that have been doing, you know, something for a certain amount of time to go have to train them all and get, it can be, it can be hard. And um, what we did is instead of, you know, just biting off a huge chunk and like doing everything at once, we, we started small and it was like, I was the first person to adopt it and all, it was just me. So it, was, it wasn't a huge cost to, you know, we'll get one, you know, high power computer, one license of you know these different programs train and then you know it wasn't until i was able to you know prove the value and in, in what i did to where we were then okay we'll we'll let a little bit more and then you can train you know a small team and then you know we, we kind of built it that way from you know the bottom up kind of in a more you know conservative approach um but it's it's still difficult we have a pretty good setup now to where you know, when we onboard, you know, new personnel within our department and, you know, BAM VDC, we know we have, you know, set training and um, resources where we know we can go to and get them trained up. And then a lot of what they're going to learn is just going to be from working with the the team that we have and, and with our processes that we have in, in place. But it was a lot of work getting there, but um, it's definitely doable um, and worth it. At the end of the day, I mean, I, I still go into a lot of, I walk into an architect's office that we're working with, and I get so frustrated because they're they're trying to argue with me on why, you know, 2D CAD is better <laughs> than Revit, and I'm like, no, no, I think that battle like, has after, been won now by most people. It's done. It's oh, done and it's, dusted. Yeah, and it's, it's like how how can you say that? <laughs> no, it's like it's like I won't even open CAD anymore because I get so frustrated. But um, you know, to each his own. But but definitely, I think when you you make the investment, if you put in the time and you have the right people that are willing to learn, which is a big thing, you got to be willing to learn. And, um, you know, you'll you'll get your return once, you know, you get over that kind of hump, you get them working efficiently, you're going to see that return on your investment. I think also, and here's where I'm going to make a plug for Excelize. We have been uh, fortunate and uh, lucky to have worked with you on some of the projects where you needed manpower and initially some support. And I think... Uh, I'm I'm glad that we were able to do that so that you could continue the BIM journey. And I think uh, that's a value addition from Excelize perspective. Yeah, for sure. And and sorry, I didn't mean to leave you out of that, but yeah, definitely no, no. you, I mean, we've been working with you for since the beginning, really. And um, a huge benefit there as well is, is we can still get, like maximize the efficiency of a process on a project where maybe not everyone's so up to speed with those technologies. If we have... Right. Our, our plumber on the job, you know, doesn't have the manpower or doesn't have the, you know, certain tech technological skill set to have someone modeling. You know, I know I can call you up and you'll have someone working with them the next day and have them up to speed and, and everything we need and, and training or whatever. Um, so that's been a huge benefit. Thank you. Us. Thank you for saying that. Uh, one last question, and I know we have just a couple of minutes left, so I'm going to end it within the 15 minute span. Um, if you had to pick a, one or two of the things that are happening, you know, digital reality capture, laser scanning, um, 
AI and machine learning and some of all the new things that are happening, uh, what would you say are in your from your perspective today where we stand, what are the two things that are going to be important in the future? BIM is foundational. 3D, you have to do. So let's say that that is something that you have. Then what would the, be the two technologies in the future which people could uh, start looking at seriously? Oh, man. Um, I mean, there's you know so many applications out there right now and just trying to sift through, you know, the ones that are still being developed or where they're going and um, the actual value to the project. But I see a lot happening now with um, in like the AI space. Okay. Um, we're, we're, we're testing a lot of products, looking into, you know, there's some, some really exciting stuff going on there with integration with your BIM models and your schedule and, uh, you know, automatic uh, quality checking. Um, and schedule updates based on the actual in-place elements on your construction site and all this like automated processes that are happening. I mean, a lot of it's still early on, but I see a lot of promise in that direction and a lot of value right. that's going to come um, as those things get developed. Um, you know, but we're still like, there's certain things that we've adapted and been now using for a little while where we're still getting, um, you know, great value, just standard, like you said, foundational, BIM coordination, drones, 3D printing, um, right. the the BIM app that Procore came out with maybe a year or so ago, we've been using heavily, and that's added tremendous value on all of our projects Wonderful. and integrating our process, which used to be somewhat broken in the past, and now getting everyone involved and getting access to the, the models model. and, and the issues and everything else. In um, fact, uh, one of the things I did want to mention to you, um, because you probably missed it, one of the first BIM talks that we did was with Toggle.ai. Oh, okay. And, <laughs> and so I was very uh, impressed with the kind of things that are happening there with machine learning and AI. And I wanted to bring that to um, our audience in LinkedIn and other places and said, you know, this is a place, good place to start. So thank you for making that introduction also. And I must... Mm -hmm. uh, uh, I've been meaning to send you that uh, video presentation. I'll do that. Thank you so much, uh, John, for taking the time today. I really appreciate it. I know you're very busy and it's been uh, a pleasure to have you here. Thank you so much. Yeah, no, thanks for having me. It was a pleasure speaking with you again. Thanks, John.